Welcome to the Digital Marketing Insights Podcast, brought to you by Brightside Digital. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. I'm delighted to say we have Veronica with us today. Veronica, how are you doing? Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Tom, for having me today. Very welcome. Verona, can we start off by you telling everyone a little bit about yourself and your career to date, please? Yes, of course. It's always tricky to introduce yourself, so. <laughs> but I can, I can sum it up uh, as uh, I'm a millennial expert in Amsterdam, originally from Piedmont, Italy. And I can describe myself as a digital savvy, a globetrotter spirit, and a sports enthusiast, uh, in particular uh, for outdoor sports. Love it. And you have some brilliant experience along the way. So we'll touch on that. But what do you see as your main comfort zone in digital? What, what's your go to place? Um, let's say work wise, I maturated a solid experience in the sport and entertainment industry um, because I, I work for major players in the sport business and I focus my career on the up to now in digital content strategy, creative content production, social media communication. And the one thing that I really care a lot is inclusion and diversity matters in sport. Brilliant. Yes, such good points. And (laughs) can I ask you, we'll we'll focus on some of your campaign work and the projects you've done in the past. Is there anything that stands out as a huge moment, a, a thing you're very proud of with some of the companies you've worked for? Oh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, I think uh, um, because I, I used to work for Juventus Football Club, and that has been a great part of, of, my, of my background experience uh, professionally. And I think that one campaign was more like a communication campaign, and, and it really grew everything afterwards for, for, of what I'm proud of. Uh, it was the launch of the Juventus women team, uh, back in 2017. That was absolutely an amazing moment, not only professionally, but historically, because in Italy, we already had at the time several women's teams, but the launch of the Juventus women's team made a huge impact in the society. Uh, really, like the TVs stopped showing the matches, and the, our team stopped winning, and they won several trophies in, in years in the years to come. So that was an incredible uh, opportunity uh, that I had work-wise, but of course that had a huge impact in the life of many. Uh, so I think, and also all the collaborations that we have done after that. Uh, so the, the collaboration that we have done with Barbie, for example, with their campaign, uh, um, You Can Do Anything, which is very, very, a very strong payoff and campaign of Barbie. Uh, it has been a great opportunity for me to really see how some marketing campaigns, some campaign communication campaigns can really make an impact in the audience, in the people, in the society. So, you know, up, even if it's just marketing at some point, you're like, okay, this is making an impact besides uh, the sale. And that was uh, something that truly um, was really dri- uh, driving me um, as a passion, as, you know, things to do, as things to create, as uh, marketing um, campaigns to, to activate. So that was amazing. Love it. And, like, give me an idea because obviously Juventus, uh, the men's and, w- and women's team, they obviously produce loads of content on the field. But is it harder to come up with the campaigns and the stuff away from the pitches you know is there how do you come up with engaging content and producing work away from you know the 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 show in the on in the stadiums actually we weren't uh let's say not using the pitch to describe also juventus women team um but uh it was like the idea was let's not compare the type of football that they're playing. Let's not compare men and women on the same base because 
men and women play different um, in a different way. You appreciate the sport in different ways. And this happens in most of the sports. So I, our idea was really to enlighten a little bit more how cool the difference are and how cool the, the, event, the, the women team was. And, and this was actually happened really fast because everyone got really caught up with the, with the team. They were really proud of this initiative. And I, I, the, 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 the stadium when the, the women were uh, playing were always full of people. So we didn't perceive this difference. Of course, you know, like uh, the main male team is more established in the in the audience, and there are like some more conservative audiences sometimes uh, to break through. But I think we did an amazing job in communicating, you know, how the the different personalities in the teams were, and how strong the, our girls uh, were, uh, not only on the field but also personality wise. And, this was like a really, uh, I think the audience started to appreciate a lot also the personality of the girls. Um, since there was, you know, a little bit less of um, uh, um, media attention at the beginning, it was easier also for us from the communication team to really create some really cool content with a little bit more time because uh, male, uh, male players sometimes have less time because they have lots of sponsors, lots of media, a lot of um, interviews to do. So you usually have less time with them. And with the women uh, players, we had more opportunities to spend time together to create some really, really powerful content. And that was something absolutely um, uh, stunning for us to do. Love it. And uh, t tell me, some of those content pieces and and your ideas in that what is there any that you thought okay this was a really good one to get the message across the teams the personalities yeah i think that um there are two really big ones that i i remember and they were i, were, I was really proud of one was the collaboration with barbie because the um the captain of the team was selected among uh, only 10 people around the world for different um, areas uh, as one of the main um, to become a Barbie itself. And this Barbie is displayed in the museum right now, in the Juventus Museum right now. And of course, this was a great opportunity to collaborate and show how this dream of little girls can become a profession. It can be is now established and now women and girls can dream of becoming professional football players. Um, this was an amazing and uh, um, successful uh, video content creation that we have done with a little girl from our uh, young, uh, younger team and the, the captain itself. Um, so, of course, it was, uh, it was really incredible to have the chance to have these two different players uh, talking together and see how they could, you know, uh, inspire each other to achieve uh, their uh, their true self. Uh, this was an amazing uh, campaign that I had the opportunity to follow. And another really good opportunity was when uh, the Juventus women team was able to play their first match in the in the in the stadium in the Allianz Stadium, uh, which was usually only played by the male team. This was the first time, and we had a full sold out. So it was like uh, 40,000 people, they came to watch the, the women's team. And that was an incredible opportunity to show how important and relevant women's, women's football can be and how they can dri drive a lot of attention. And that was, of course, another, another really important milestone in, in, in women's football in Italy. And is there... Um... Is there a way you go about working with brands? You mentioned the, the Barbie collaboration. Um, do you guys approach them in that scenario or did they approach you? How do you go about finalizing the uh, deal? And I suppose making sure that there comes a media team matches the expectation of yours because Juventus is such a big brand in general. So how do you, how do you get a company to match that kind of ambition and, and 
Yeah, it's a, it's a long process for sure. Um, uh, actually, um, Barbie selected our captain as a representative uh, among other 10 people of different areas, science, um, medical fields, and all these other, other women, very important, that made a really big difference in their, in their area. Uh, so she was selected, and we we were very very honored. You spend a lot of time between uh, our digital content team and uh, the the brand department of of a brand like Barbie, trying to figure out what's the best way to portray that experience and that opportunity, and trying to create content that reflects uh, that reflects that type of. Um, vision that both brands want to give so you you sit uh one next to each other or digitally one in front of each other uh and you start to the, let's say uh, create a list of things that you want to be included in the content creation and the development of the script and you know how the, the you want the image to go out for example, one of the requests, of course, from both sides, where the, uh, the the little girls from the 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 younger teams were included, because of course, uh, uh, this is to inspire younger girls to uh, be ambitious to whatever they want, because the the main payoff of Barbie was that you can be anything. So of course, the idea was to create an inspiring moment for the younger generation and and show them that they have the all possibilities in front of them. It was a powerful message and of course after that you define this message you're able to create, you know, scripts, snack content and all different kinds of digital content that you want to uh, to drive your strategy with. Love it. And to change uh, a little bit uh softwares like is there any softwares that you swear by that you use regularly in your role is there anything that you always go to um i i wouldn't say that i use some a lot of software uh, to create the strategy itself but it's it's more like about keeping up with the trends in content uh, that is absolutely essential so for example right now one thing that you have to keep up with is for sure uh, the um, artificial intelligence content creation, which is huge and is impacting every aspect of content creation from podcasting, uh, from social media, videos, photos, and all different also softwares that are using now uh, uh, inter um, artificial intelligence, like, for example, Photoshop or other, other softwares. So it is really important, in my opinion, to keep up with this trend, understand which one are here to stay and which one are, you know, just like temporary trends. Um, but it's, it is really, really important to keep up maybe with, uh, uh, with a lot of different creators that explain this kind of things and you can keep up with all the, the different um, of the sector. Love it. And on that note, is there anywhere you go, websites or magazines or anything that gives um, you the new insights and information? Is there anything that you always go to? Yes, I think there are lots of different ones that I follow, uh, many in Italian, uh, because I'm Italian, uh, but also a lot of in English as well. Um, I honestly, I also keep up with a lot of podcasts that talk about trends, that talk about, you know, uh, also political changes or uh, um, different kind of news. You can really get inspired and also keep up with the possible trends in the future or anticipate them maybe even even better. Um, so I think that there are lots of different ones that I follow. Maybe one that I would suggest because they talk about different topics uh, that, that can concern um, digitalization, innovation, but also political changes is uh, the European uh, podcast. It is a really nice one, and I really think it's uh, it's something that you can be contaminated with different information, not only digitally specific, but can really help keeping your mind open and maybe understand and envision what's coming. Love it. Love it. And and yourself for a second, Veronica, is there anywhere you're looking to upskill or learn more about currently? Is there anything that you're 
interested in learning more in, in digital, I suppose? Um, yes, uh, I'm an avid learner, so I always try to learn something new every year. I think I would love to learn more about, about video making and editing because that's a skill I should have developed before because I had the chance to do it. But of course, I focus more on photography and maybe some uh, more video making in the writing of scripts. But I think that also like having the editing skills could be a really nice advantage in understanding what the video makers are doing. Also, because, you know, in the role of the content strategist, a lot of times you find yourself um, trying to have give feedback uh, to the video maker. So having those skills could really help having more um, understanding of the difficulties of how the, 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 the editing is made. And yeah, if I had to choose, I would choose uh, video making and editing. Love it, love it. And what would you see as the biggest opportunity, I suppose, in the digital industry at, at the moment? What, what would you recommend to our listeners, our watchers? What, what you would say, okay, this is what I'd focus on running the business right now? Um, I think uh, it's, uh, I mean, videos are a big thing. And they're, they're here to stay. Um, it, adapting the type of video to the type of platform, it will, will be even more essential in the future. So understanding really the platform that you're working with and trying to differentiate them uh, from each other. So they, they need to have a common, you know, common um, line between them. They have to ha be consistent through the platform but they have to be specifically made for that platform. It's not, you know, any more sufficient to just adapt the format of the same video. Uh, so you absolutely need to personalize a little bit on the platform itself. Uh, this is the first thing that I really, really have strong feelings on. And the second one is something to keep an eye on is definitely the AI technologies because I think that they're, they're going to expand. There are like, there's so many investments right now around the AI. And this is something that I, I'm not, I'm not sure where, where it's going. Of course, nobody knows yet, but I think it's going to be something to keep an eye on and trying to understand and predict uh, where these can be at use and where it can be really, really productive. And, and like, obviously, your previous experience at Juventus and Adidas and things like that, was AI on their minds? Like, was that something they were looking at trying to help in different roles and different things? Is that, was that like a hot topic, I suppose, in their spheres? Yes, of course. I mean, um, the AI and also in general, um, um, augmented reality as well. At the time, like five, six, seven years ago, we, we were talking also about augmented reality, and that was something that we were, for example, in Juventus experimenting on. And right now, I think Adidas has already some products that you can, on their website, you can really uh, see through a lens of augmented reality. And these are things uh, that are, you know, at the, at, at the earlier stages. But of course, uh, this is going to develop for sure in the future. Uh, in every company, I think uh, it is something that uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's something that every company should uh, try to to experiment with. Love it, yeah, brilliant. And Veronica, unfortunately, I'm going to have to ask you the last question of the show, which is always a nice way to end the show, and it's to learn a little bit about you. Um, and the question is, if you could bottle up one personality trait that you have yourself that you could pass on to others, what would it be? Oh, this is a difficult one. If uh, I really, you know, I, I really love uh, the, my resilience and the ability of projecting vision into practical tasks to make a project see the light of day. But if I had to choose only one, I would definitely choose to be an emotional intelligence leader. Uh, this is something that I really, really care about because it's, it's something extremely important to have people that work with you. They are positive. They're happy of working with you. That of course they they put their 100%, but they're also you know really 
uh, trusty uh, in, in, in towards you, and they can they know they can trust you. You know that you can really rely on them, but in a positive way, and you you don't over you know overload them uh, with burden. So I think uh, being emotionally intelligent is something really really impactful in the life of the ones that we work we are working with. Great answer. Great answer. Veronica, that's it. If anyone wanted to reach out to you, talk about different things, um, how, how can they reach you? Of course, uh, they can reach me through LinkedIn as Veronica Bzanki and uh, through my Instagram, which is at uh, la und underscore Zanki. Uh, it's uh, at uh, L-A underscore Zanki, which is my last name. Love it. <laughs> Thanks so much, Veronica, for being on the show. And thanks, everyone, for watching, listening, everything else. Thank you, Tom, for having me.